This lawyer made a huge mistake not going after the doctor with a collateral attack that I want you to learn about. You want to know what this is about? Come join me for a moment as I share with you some great information. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. I had an opportunity to be in court recently and I sat in on a medical malpractice case. I happened to have sat in at the moment that the plaintiff's attorney, the attorney who represents the injured patient, was cross-examining the medical expert who was brought in by the defense to go ahead and support the fact that, hey, the doctor did nothing wrong. So now the plaintiff's attorney, the attorney who represented the injured victim, was in the middle of trying to discredit the doctor on the witness stand. And she was doing a terrible job of it. None of the questions that she was asking was getting the correct response that she wanted. Now what do I mean? She would ask the doctor certain questions known as hypothetical questions. Doctor, I want you to assume that the following facts are true. Assuming that fact A, B, and C are true, would you agree that a doctor who did not do these things violated the basic standards of medical care? And what did the doctor say in response? I'm sorry, but I can't answer your question the way you phrased it. It calls for an explanation. And every time the doctor gave that type of answer, the attorney got so frustrated, she got so fed up, and it was so obvious to the entire courtroom, to the jury, that she was having difficulty phrasing the question properly. And because she wasn't getting an, a yes or no answer, the attorney was getting so frustrated and was making stupid snide comments that really, I think, antagonized the entire courtroom. So now, during the time that I'm sitting watching this cross-examination, I'm waiting and waiting to see when this attorney is going to go ahead and do a collateral attack on the medical expert. Now, what's a collateral attack? It's an attack on the doctor's credibility that has nothing whatsoever to do with the facts of this particular case. So what do I mean? I mean talking about or asking questions about the doctor's other income, income that the doctor derives from reviewing other medical expert cases, about things that happened to the doctor in the past that may impact the doctor's credibility. And in this particular case, this attorney failed to pick up on the fact that the doctor had created notes while they were reviewing this particular case. Now why is that a big deal and why do I even mention it? I'll tell you why. If a doctor takes notes during the course of reviewing the records, the attorney who is cross-examining that doctor has an opportunity to go ahead and ask for those records and look at them. Look at those notes. Is there anything in those original notes that now favors the injured patient? Is there some comment there that the expert has written that may favor the injured patient or the claims that are being raised in this case against the doctor who is being sued. Now an attorney who fails to even ask for that information loses a clear opportunity to go after the doctor on a collateral attack. It has to do with the materials that are prepared for this doctor's expert review. So now, what did this attorney do? Clearly missed the boat because during the course of questioning she did ask the doctor, hey doctor, what records did you review in preparation for coming into court to testify here and explain to the jury your opinions and conclusions? And the doctor gave a whole laundry list of medical records and said, hey listen, in addition to those records, I reviewed my notes, I reviewed the deposition testimony, I reviewed the trial testimony, I was given daily copy, so I know exactly what other witnesses have said before me. And this attorney failed to recognize and pick up on the fact that she reviewed her notes in preparation for coming into court to testify. The very first thing an astute trial attorney is going to do is say, Doctor, what records did you bring with you to court today? And now if the doctor says, I didn't bring anything with me today, well, now you can go ahead and do a collateral attack about the fact that the doctor, the expert, didn't bring those records to court. Doctor, you mentioned you reviewed some notes. Are those your own personal notes? Yes, they are. And you made those notes at the time that you reviewed this case when the records were first sent to you? Yes, I did. And how many pages were those notes, Doctor? Oh, they were two or three pages. Terrific. Did you bring those here with you today? No, I didn't. Doctor, you know after having reviewed medical records in legal cases like these that if you bring notes to court, I'm entitled to see those records. Isn't that true? Yes. And you know that the, one of the key reasons why you chose not to bring those notes to court is because you didn't want me to see those notes. Isn't that true? Objection, Judge! Now the judge will have to rule on the objection. But the point is, you have a fertile ground to go ahead and go after the doctor about those notes. This lawyer missed that opportunity totally 
Why? I don't know why. Probably because she was thinking about something else, didn't pick up on the fact that the doctor actually mentioned the notes. And even if they don't mention it, this is something that should be addressed to find out what, if any, notes the doctor made. And why aren't those notes in court? And they're not in court for a key reason. And the doctor should know, having testified before in other similar cases, that if you bring those notes to court, I can actually see those records. I can read them, I can review them, and then I can ask you questions about them. Because there may be something in your notes that are favorable to me. Maybe they're not, but at least I'm entitled to see them. And the fact that you have made notes and did not bring them into court suggests to me, as the attorney, that maybe you're trying to hide something, and I want the jury to know that information. But this lawyer didn't do any of that. And that, to me, is a disservice to her case, a disservice to her client, and now it's a missed opportunity. So why do I share this great information with you? I share it with you just to give you an inside look. It's something that I observed personally in a medical malpractice case recently here in New York. You know, I do recognize you're watching this video because you likely have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if you have not yet started a lawsuit and are thinking about bringing a case here in New York that happened here in New York, and you have questions that need answers, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know, I answer questions just like yours, and I'd love to talk to you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. Well, that's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.